What's up guys, it's your boy Demone, aka Demotivational, and today we are going into episode 2 of The Replacements, where we take the most OP units that most people want, and we tell you units that you can use instead of these units, uh, specifically 2 or 3 star monsters that can fill the role if built correctly. So the unit in question today, guys, you guessed it, is Vertahill, the Fire Vampire, since I was unsuccessful in pulling one. <laughs> For uh, Pono in that epic summon session. Although we pulled them some good units. If you guys haven't seen that video, definitely go check that out. Uh, but I know a lot of units want this particular unit. But I wanted to talk about a unit that could potentially fill his shoes. Although to not, not to his extent. They're very close to it if you guys are looking for a unit similar to this one. Um, so let's talk about what Verde does for those of you guys who don't know who he is or what he does and explain to you why Verde is OP. So upon awakening, this guy, ooh, Verde Hill, um, he has a dungeon lead, increases the attack speed of violent monsters in dungeons by 28%. He also has boiling blood, which makes him crazy. His critical hits increase the attack bars of all allies by 20%. This effect does not have, this effect does not have effect on allies that have similar skill effects, okay? So basically, you can't run double Verde, okay? Now, understand that um, this will still stack um, on your other allies. It just won't stack on, let's say, the other Verde Hill. Does that make sense? So, Noble Agreement strikes a strong blow with a surprise attack. This attack receives a 30% critical rate bonus. Um, and then as Vampire Bat attacks two times with a Vampire Bat and recovers HP by 30% inflicting damage. Now, what makes him so overpowered is basically every time he hits, he's going to increase the attack bar, granting your team a lot more turns, which gives your team more opportunities to be effective. Now, for those of you guys who are looking for a replacement for this unit, you need to look to none other than... Y'all ready? Can y'all guess it? Can y'all guess it? Can y'all guess it? Can y'all guess it? Boom. My boy Raccoonie right here. Uh, this guy is a sleeper. I know a lot of people are starting to use this unit in guild battle in specific situations. But if you guys haven't looked at this unit or you guys have pulled a million of these and you've just been throwing them away because you guys thought he was crap or he didn't have a cape, um, you guys need to definitely, well, I mean, he kind of has a cape, more like a poncho, but <laughs> because he doesn't have a cape, uh, you guys definitely should take another look at this unit all on selling, selling a rune from GB10 here. Okay, so let's talk about his skills. Little Hummingbird Passive removes up to two harmful effects on the ally with the lowest HP and heals 10% of the ally's HP each turn. Okay, now his Rabbit's Agility fills up an ally's attack bar to the max and increases the target's attack speed for two turns. So he's like a built in Konamiya. Okay, now the trick is here is on his Breeze, he attacks the target and increases the attack bar of the ally with the lowest attack bar by 15%. Now you combine that with a passive cleanse and heal with another attack bar increase down here and you have a unit that flows very well that can grant your team a lot of turns if he moves consistently. So when looking at this unit, when building this particular unit, you want to make sure that he has a lot of speed on him. Popular builds include Swift whatever, uh, just making sure that you build him as fast as you can. Why? So that way he maximizes on this skill one as much as he can, as many times as he can. He gets the heal plus the harmful effect removal, he, and he can also fill in as a cleanser. This little guy comes as close to Verta Hill as I can think with, you know, being only a three star and relatively easy to get. He can be very effective. He can be used in your DB10 comp, again, if he is ruined sufficiently. This little guy packs an amazing punch, not in terms of damage, but in terms of being an incredible support for your team. He can fit anywhere. He's annoying in guild battle, annoying in a, uh, in, in RTA. Um, he can be very effective in a lot of different situations. Again, guys, if you haven't given this guy a look and you guys are stressed about not having a Verta Hill, you might want to pay attention to this unit only to build him, max him out, find out how OP he is just so you can pull Verta Hill right afterwards. Because <laughs> that's just how this game works. But Rakuni is one of those hidden underdogs that not a lot of people are paying attention to. And if you haven't, I advise that you definitely take a look at this unit. So, with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode two of The Replacements. You guys pick the units. We cover them, we find the replacements, and we help you move to the next level so you don't have to worry about those particular units. Now, that being said, love you guys. You guys have a wonderful day, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.